Hello everybody and today we are going to answer some comments on the video of Ottomans Empire Syria. I wonder why so little of you have watched it yet but maybe it's not the time. Uh, okay, this one comment uh, was made four hours ago. I don't know the name of the guy but I think he's Greek and he says that he wants to share with us uh, pictures of uh, mud flood in the 19th century in Mykene, Greece. Mykene, Greece. Okay. So we're gonna open up the post. Um, as you can see, it starts some with some Greek text. I don't think we want to read it first. Let's let's check the pictures and maybe. So, what this picture is showing is uh, maybe the general plan of, uh, but it looks pretty nice, nothing bothers me really, maybe this little stuff over here, but it could be just, uh, maybe this one is uh, a wave of mud, but just a decent plan, we don't care, anything is not, is, is okay here. So second picture is okay this is stars a good story here we see some ruins we see some you know piles of mud maybe blocks uh, and we see some maybe entrance stuff like that but it's so buried in the mud as you can see uh, again this is similar to what we saw on uh, this here, this is Crimea, and definitely this is one civilization, and Cr uh, Crimea is pretty close to Greece, and uh, one architectural style, and it's uh, pretty similar to Egyptian inside of uh, the pyramid of Giza the big pyramid or you know, the great pyramid I don't know so so this is similar and uh, I think we have antique style here so-called antique style why it's antique because ants or ants uh, I would call them ants first because um, the correct pronunciation is with A not with A but let's call them ants whatever and uh, so the ants or, or giants or Atlanteans uh, were one civilization, one trade union and uh, definitely they made architecture on the same level which is close and uh, also called colonial style in the general and the monumental it looks like this so the they have uh, underground facilities so it, it's well designed and mostly most of those pyramids, most of those uh, objects are buried in the mud in some type of mud or maybe sand sometimes, sand with mud, sand with rocks and uh, it's all the same everywhere uh, so okay so this is pretty much the same I don't think we have very detailized picture here but it looks like a a bunch of blocks were broken and uh, something maybe is even the underground level I don't know what it is what's his man doing here so let's check some next one maybe this is the entrance to this is another view of devastation we see devastation, we see all these uh, rocks, all this mixed up. Yeah, looks like it was pretty messed up with the mud flood. And we see maybe a close of you on the same picture. And it looks like, yes, it has some underground facilities. So it could be a house, it could, this could be a, a roof of the house, and they are standing on the roof of uh, a house and that's why we have 
this entrance from the roof. There's people trying to dig something, maybe want to find something, maybe some artifacts, maybe this is archaeological mission, who knows. Another view from another place, still we see this level of the mud, almost closing the entrance, almost sealing it, but not yet, so... doesn't look it was dug out it looks like it was like half sealed stuff like that that's probably location uh, there's another picture of devastation here just pictures so this is the full height so just imagine if uh, the, the modern level of the ground of uh, the level of the, of the soil is here and how deep is this facility? Maybe it was an Angar, maybe something like that, who knows. Why was it made? They, they, they say always say it's a burial purpose. <laughs> I don't think so. No funeral mm, ever shows no, no, um, no proof of funeral here. Even if we see some... Uh, uh, box, a huge megalithic box which is made obviously from the concrete from the gear polymerical concrete so if we see this huge monolithic box and they say it's a some type of uh, feral burial place or something like that don't always believe it. Check it yourself. Maybe it's a box, but maybe it's not. Uh, who knows what the, the box was made for? We don't know anything about ancient technologies, as we say. I find I find uh, just a little what is obvious. We need help to find all these technologies that were used. Maybe those facilities are for something, not just for burial. Just imagine the amount of a job. And how many people cussing while building this place? So that MF that, that MF that, F that. Just imagine, they know they're building this for killing somebody and burying it. Who knows? All those emperors, all those pharaohs were most likely killed by their kids or maybe who is next to be an emperor. You know that. Once you're getting old, once you can protect yourself, in ancient times it was a dead end. Maybe you got you get lucky, maybe one out of five times or so. But most of them were killed or poisoned and stuff like that. So believe me, all those guys who were building this place cast and just, you know, said many angry words about that guy. So just imagine what energy this is containing if that's what the burial place and who would have said who would have ordered to build himself this this stupid thing you know we don't find any evidence that, that anybody was buried maybe like a thousand years ago no one was buried everyone was, was burned and that's it just burned sand on the pile of wood and burned with the fire and sent to float on the river. That's it. So, this is definitely was made for something else, and we don't know what it is. And they don't tell us because if they want, if they want us to find out what this was really made for, what this facility was made for, just imagine how many information we, that we get if we look at this another way. So I encourage everybody who's visiting those places, those strange places with strange architecture, strange dual purpose architecture as I call it, because you can, you can, you know, have a garage to store a car, but you can't have a garage, you can have a garage where you can live, and you can have a garage where you can, you know, make chemical weapons, who knows?
what you're making in your garage. You, you may have a garage to store a library. You may have a garage to cover your entrance to your underground facility. You may have any kind of you know purpose for your garage. So we just can only guess. But the way it was built, how many uh, resources were uh, actually spent to build this place is amazing. Just for burying something or somebody, it's just stupid. Even if he is a king or pharaoh, who knows? But just imagine what amount of job did those people did to bury somebody. It's irrational. And this is the picture of devastation. And if they tell you that it is cultural layer, you you may doubt that too because not every time you have this cultural layer. And if they tell you it was a flood from the sea, you you gotta check out for uh, all those sea life uh, petrified little sea animals and stuff like that. Maybe some shrimps. I don't know. Just looking for some sea evidence. And when you don't see any sea evidence, when you see continental flood, this is a continental flood. That means it was grabbing the soil from the continent, not from the sea. Those concrete blocks are easy to make in our times, as, and they probably were made just like our ours just in the form and maybe some reinforcement inside you know we we scan a bunch of uh, um, blocks and uh, I've had a I've had a video um, I watched a video about uh, some Cambodian blocks and uh, they just find them uh, with the reinforcement inside Maybe, maybe, but those guys used uh, aluminum and mud from the rivers to, uh, they knew the, uh, the chemical, um, they knew the chemical proportions of making those blocks without reinforcement. And uh, why are they not uh, yet broken? And uh, they have those layers fell from them, yes. But why they not yet broken? Because of those organic add-ins that they uh, added inside those concrete mixture. And they knew the proportion because they practiced. And they knew how to make those cheap blocks and they knew how to make those megalithic blocks. You know? And that's why we see the combination. Because you can't make everything with those huge megalithic blocks. That's why they made the insides made all this inside stuff with this and outside were cool megalithic blocks with all those add-ins to be more like decent looking block so you can see this is concrete and it's falling apart just cheap blocks here and maybe a couple of uh, expensive blocks on the entrance and stuff like that but they all could have been pasted or blasted. I don't know how did they call it last time. Um, let's see. Plaster it, plaster it, yeah. So they can only be plastered to look okay. <clears throat> but in general they use them just the way it looks uh, the, the stone looks they didn't you know they didn't spend any time repairing those blocks and stuff like that <coughs> uh, another picture of many many blocks laying around but not very high resolution on it because the painter didn't want maybe he want to 
paint the devastation that's it there's no details here just you see a little gates ha hanging around and that's it that's a man close to some megalithic wall okay well that's an actual picture of modern uh, preservance of these objects so it's pretty devastated really and that's the way it was found nothing yet cleaned up as we see and now it's pretty decent they have those roads you can like walk around pay a little money buy this buy that that's okay okay but if you can't repair something show us the actual you know actual site in uh, 3d maybe model and stuff like that so you show us the painting okay but make us the full picture what was around this so we can understand what's the purpose of this does the purpose of that so full picture no full picture no one shows the full picture because they don't know most of the facts and they can just make it up because there's a bunch of activists who always uh, be against this fake new uh, versions new theories and that's why they stay conservative they don't they keep it silent they don't understand what's going on and they make this just ordinary uh, looking like nothing what's this uh, <laughs> this is a real picture no what is based on nothing just they couldn't have anything because they couldn't have anything. They were the ancient, that's why they ha could have just like this. It's ridiculous. This is doesn't look like what these painters did. 3D models. They gotta uh, make inside of everything. They, they, they try to do it. In fact, they try to do it, but they stay conservative. They don't make anything. They don't think. General plans. So this is a concrete form. What's to wonder? nothing to wonder this is a, you know that's a proof they had the plastering look at this this is a part of the plaster and something is painted on it. maybe they even painted it to show some design I don't know I don't see anything strange here who knows who did this maybe a little kid okay this is a good one uh, as we see huge holes here so maybe underground entrance to something too but it shows how it actually was at the time it was found pretty interesting maybe this is this I don't know looks like it so thanks a lot for sharing this information with us as we can see it also is on topic and pretty interesting to check different places different cities and different ancient sites so-called antique sites and uh, definitely is a great finding thanks a lot If we look at this block, we can see the sign of concrete. 
just made this form to lock those blocks on top it kind of locks them from movement This huge flat block is definitely the ceiling block. And I, and I kind of like this, you know, metal reinforcement that they built. Because, you know, if it held on for a thousand years, you sure have to reinforce it. Because it may, like, break and stuff like that. How do they know it? We don't see any cracks. Maybe they have cracks, but I don't see any cracks here. Okay, some more blocks, definitely concrete, as we can see, the concrements of stone, little rocks here, just like you do when you make cheap concrete blocks. Yeah, just like concrete, look at this, very cheap concrete blocks. That's what they think they really look like, but who knows, who knows. Okay, and uh, the second question, the second comment was about, uh, let's see, the period of flood, Sina Atis asks, because he wants to research Turkish resources. I encourage you guys to research your country sources about something strange that actually happened in 19th century uh, because uh, that's the only thing that we can actually touch because everything that's later than 19th century is definitely not to be trusted still until we figure out what actually happened in 19th century well, we can we can make the theories, we can make stuff like that, but that's nothing to show us. We cannot prove anything without proving the 19th century. And uh, think about it. Why is that? Because uh, if we don't know 19th century, how can we talk about 18th, 17th, 16th and so on? How can we talk about that? Did you know that most of the um, well-known facts that we are based on right now were made in 19th century. Everything was made in 19th century. The internal combustion engine was made in 19th century. It was, uh, it's a uh, steam engine. It's modified, modified steam engine. It's steam em engine technology. Steam. And nothing changed for. 200 years we are still on the same steam engine so just imagine how smart was were the guys of 19th century to make this stuff railroads steam engines and stuff like that just imagine that it's completely impossible to make it with all those technologies that they had in 19th century how can they, could they do, do it? We don't know. Could they done it? I don't know. So, uh, if we talk about the, the flood of 18th, 17th and so on centuries, I can say that probably there were some floods, but the flood I'm really researching right now is 19th century flood. So, I encourage you first to check the 19th century and probably um, 19th century in the middle of it because the second half is pretty clear and uh, maybe from the 60s and 17th of 19th century everything is gets pretty clear but what it was before that it's completely ridiculous because everything contradicts everything so 
let's stay on 19th century let's stick on that and uh, do more deep research so thanks a lot for commenting there's some more decent comments of course and uh, there's some comment uh, from Botcat he thinks about the western back militias and proxy armies destroying ancient archaeological sites and artifacts at record rates so uh, of course they do this war they, they made for uh, everything in the war is a profit making Every, everybody knows that so when you uh, definitely destroy something you first steal something because who could finance this operation just impossible to control those guys who doing that if they do that so when they doing that they first of all steal everything and then they blow stuff and stuff like that make an explosive uh, to uh, destroy some evidence of something or maybe destroy some uh, really well-known artifact for some reason but they they do it and they fake all those mm, fake all those uh, artifacts because if they destroy the evidence of something you can make fake theories they're the ones who making these facts and in hundred years when you visit Syria nobody's gonna talk about something that is right now who knows what are they gonna be talking about that's why all those guys destroying Iraq museums they destroying Syrian museums uh, those ancient uh, antique cities then after that you're gonna see maybe uh, Israel or Jordania I don't know who's next maybe Egypt who knows where those guys can reach they can reach everywhere they're the ones who are making profit from the wars and that's uh, that's why they do it so uh, thanks a lot for watching I hope you like this uh, type of uh, conclusions that we've made during this video ask me questions uh, subscribe and share the video Thanks.